Hello, Proitians. Um, so we have covered quite a few important topics uh, till now in, in our sessions. Today, are we going to cover one of the most important topic? So, I mean, uh, if you and it's going to be long session, yes. So, in case if you're feeling as if I mean it's taking too much uh, on on you, don't worry. Hit a pause button and uh, take a break. Come back if you still uh, want to have a look on the the previous sessions. Do that, then uh, move forward because it's always important that you build your basics and your concepts uh, strong your basics and concepts should be strong and then you move forward because that is what is going to help you in uh, in uh, python to be an approach right because in the future sessions we are going to talk about uh, how we are going to use python in data science and how we are going to use python in machine learning or um, ai so all those things we are going to touch base on python yes so it's very important that you make sure that your basics and concepts are strong. Practice as much as possible. Um, that that will help. Okay. Uh, today, uh, so today we are going to cover um, something uh, about uh, data types. So we are going to talk about uh, tuples. Uh, we are going to talk about dictionaries, list, set, range. We are going to touch base on integers, uh, float. Uh, as well as complex numbers and we are going to touch base on a bit on strings and we are going to uh, close the session with booleans so it's going to be a big session yes a long session yes and a very important session yeah because with this we are going to build on uh, the structure on python for the future session right so i'll see you in the class yeah thank you Welcome back to ITNs. Now since we know about variables in Python, let's see what are data types. So in Python, you don't need to declare variables. Yeah? For example, x equals 10, y equals 3.14, z equals 9. Right? As you can see, I didn't have to declare uh, the data types as you do in a, in other programming languages. Yeah, in Python data types, there are uh, integers, strings, and there are some other uh, data types which we will be covering in this session, such as uh, set, range, dictionary, tuples. So all those sort of things we are going to cover in this session. So in Python, since everything is an object, data types are actually classes and variables in, are instance of those classes. Okay, so let's touch base on what are the naming conventions used in Python. Yeah, so a variable name must start with a letter or an underscore only. So it can't start with an integer. A variable name can contain numbers but it can't be used to start the name of the variable right so yeah like we can have um, x1 x2 but it can't be 1x 2x right variable name uh, sorry there is no restriction for the length of the name of variable but it always it is always better to have a meaningful name so what it means is you just uh, when when you are defining a variable right you keep a name which is meaningful and when you're going to go through or uh, read through the codes it should make a meaning to that uh, the name of the variable which you have used it should not be like uh, some sort of a junk characters which is meaningless okay variables are case sensitive meaning small x and capital x are different yeah for example if i have uh, this one right uh, so if I do x 
I get value as 10. But if I do capital X, is not defined, right? So small x and capital X are different. Okay, so th that's what it meant. Variable name should not be from the Python keywords such as int, print, str, true, false, and so on and so forth. So these are some of the restrictions when you're uh, using going to use the. I mean, these are the some of the restrictions for naming conventions uh, that are used in Python, right? Now let's talk about the different. Um, data types in python so python has a few of the data types uh, five of them name, uh, basically so the first one is about uh, i mean that is categorized as numbers those are int float and complex okay we are going to see the some of the examples on that then the second data type is strings then the third data type is uh, sequence type it is uh, i mean this is again we are going to look uh, in the examples uh, they are like list, tuple, range, and set. Then we have the fourth one is uh, that is categorized as mapping type, uh, which is like a dictionary. It has a key value pair. Uh, we are going to discuss in detail. Uh, and the last one is boolean. So boolean are like true or false. Again, we are going to discuss and look with some examples. Okay. Now. Um, let's uh, see some um, uh, practicals on on all these sort of things right so we have already defined some variables right here x equals to 10 y is equals to 3.14 z is equals to 9 right now how do we know what is the data type okay so for that we are going to use a function named type uh, x okay let's see the output so it got class int correct okay, so as you can see the object type is uh, of class int and variable that is uh, the name in an instance of the type is class string so as you can see we can we have object data type is of class uh, integer and variable uh, that is x is an instance of type of class integer yeah so that's what we meant earlier. Now, if you want, you can have a look at type y. Okay, so we got a float because it is 3.14. And now type z. And now we got a string because it is with nine. Yeah. Now there's one more data type uh, which we have not yet covered. That is uh, that is. Uh, complex so we have covered integers we have covered uh, float we have covered string let's let's look an example of uh, complex so uh, we define c is equals to three six nine plus okay seven j hit enter right now we get uh, we can check the type of this um, enter it's complex yeah so here it goes yeah so as you can see we have got uh, i mean when we uh, use the function type we got the class integer we have got float string and complex so these are the all the data types uh, for uh, which are assigned to a variable that is a class Okay, um, now is it possible that we convert an integer to a float or float to integer or integer to um, complex and vice versa? Let's have a look. Okay, so we have uh, y as 3.14, right? Can we convert this to integer? Right? Let's, let's see. So y is equals to int. Y. Okay, I hit enter, and now I get a value as y as three. So as you can see, the fraction part was truncated, right? Um, the point one four was removed, and only the decimal, uh, only the whole part was written. So it has com converted the float to an integer. Yeah. Now. Um, 
let's have a look if we can convert the other way around where we have x is equals to integer data type right let's try to convert x into fruit okay now x right 10.0 10.0 uh, type x class float right and uh, we can also have a look at type y class integer because we have converted uh, earlier it was float and we have converted it to integer yeah so that's how it has worked now let's have a look on conversion from integer to complex okay um, we'll have a look uh, with the example from integer to complex but uh, I mean the same will work for float to uh, complex yeah so let's do this uh, a is equals to 10 b is equals to 20 and c is equals to complex a comma b bracket close enter okay now let's see what is the value of c so is c has got a value of 10 plus because of the uh, i mean comma it has actually uh, put 20 here after the plus sign and then j so this is an example of uh, complex right we can have a check okay so class complex correct right uh, now let's talk about some uh, examples on sequence uh, data types so let's start with list okay so list yeah now what is list so list is an ordered sequence of items it is one of the most used data types in python and is very flexible all the items in the list do not need to be of same type it can be a uh, string it can be integers and so on and so forth okay? so for detecting a list you need to declare the items separated by comma in square brackets yeah, we are going to look at, have a look on that we can also use square brackets to extract an item or a range of items from the list also as we saw in previous sessions the list starts with an index value of zero yeah also one important thing list lists are mutable meaning the value of the elements in the list can be changed okay now let's check it out l uh, i'm defining a list uh, with a variable l equal three comma six point nine Oh, sorry one moment three comma six point nine comma one plus seven j comma nish okay now l so i got all those values right so i put three six point nine and all those things right now uh, let's have a look in uh, the data type for list okay so as you can see oh actually I have uh, mistyped it I should be putting uh, this one I've actually covered the next topic which is tuple so uh, I'll cover tuple in a moment in the meantime let's uh, have a look at list one moment there's a slight difference between list and tuple uh, one of the difference is square brackets uh, uh, that is used in list and the another uh, difference is lists are mutable and tuples are immutable rest all the things are same uh, so let's have a look at the example of list and then we'll cover the examples on tuples here so here it is and now if we type type l and 
enter now we got class as list yeah so we can actually have l um, comma 2 uh, sorry uh, square bracket 2 and you got 1 plus 7j correct now uh, we have I mean as I said it is mutable right so we can change the value of that right so L square bracket 2 square bracket is equals to okay now now if we type L I get the value as so you, as you can see 1 plus 7j was replaced by by uh, a string 9 correct so that is that is um, about list now tuples uh, tuples are uh, also the same uh, the only difference is yes uh, uh, the brackets and also they are uh, they are separated by commas but uh, tuples are immutable okay now let's take the example of uh, tuples uh, let me copy from here because we have already done that right so control C control V I'll define tuples with T and I hit enter okay now I get the value of tuple as this one uh, I check the uh, type uh, as uh, and I got the class as tuple right right so uh, in tuples also we can extract the values uh, like we uh, did here uh, for list so t uh, to enter yeah so I got the value output as same yeah but if I have to change like t uh, to is equals to nayan enter tuple object does not support item assignment so that means tuples are immutable all right now let's look at the next part uh, that is range so range is a function that uh, returns a sequence of numbers starting from 0 by default and in increments by 1 um, so it will stop before a specified number so uh, so range will have three parameters that is start stop and step step is like how how many um, what will be the uh, next uh, value or how many skips uh, that we have to uh, put or uh, that uh, python has to do uh, to print the next value so let's have an example r is equals to range yeah um, 2 comma or sorry uh, 3 comma 10 comma 3 in bracket close so 3 is the start 10 is the stop and 3 is the um, the step so it is going to start with 3 and then it is going to increase um, the uh, counter by 3 and it is going to print the value so let's have a look r and you got oh, sorry um, so um, we will type list r enter so as you can see 3 6 and 9 we got the output as 3 6 and 9 yeah so again um, so it has skipped the uh, numbers from uh, in between 3 and 10 by by uh, three steps so 3 6 and 9 right also you can extract the output right uh, for example uh, 3 I mean you can have this is called a slicing so you can get the uh, value of what is which is in the second index so 
uh, again 0 1 and 2 so we should be getting 9 correct okay sorry I used the wrong brace it should be square braces right okay so we get got 9 right great uh, so guys uh, we are covering quite a few things uh, in case if you feel like uh, it's uh, getting too much then uh, you can please feel free to take a break or go through uh, this part again and come back continue with the rest of the session so, yeah so that's that's the advantage of having uh, these sort of sessions which are online recorded uh, so that you can go back and uh, check what you have uh, learned or what you want to brush up on okay so now let's look at the another example that is set so set is an unordered collection of unique items set is defined by value separated by comma inside a curly braces so items in the set are not ordered but you get an output of ordered unique values right now let's have a look s equals and it's going to be curly braces right uh, 4 comma 1 comma uh, 5 comma 2 comma 4 for example yeah and let's see now what do you think guys uh, what should be the output are we going to get 4 twice let's have a look so okay s so we got 1, 2, 4, 5. 1, 2, 4, and 5. So what it has done is, it is only, first of all, it has put it in a sequence, right? And it has uh, also uh, given only the unique output. So there was, 4 was twice, but it has only printed once, right? So that is the advantage of, uh, that's how it works, right? Now, let's quickly look at dictionary. Okay, so dictionary is an unordered collection of key value pairs. So it will have a key and a value. It is used when we have a large amount of data, right? Dictionaries are optimized for retrieving data. And dictionaries are defined within curly braces. Okay, let's see with an example. Okay, so we'll put D equals curly braces uh, niche colon 19 comma 9 colon 16 and tuli colon 40 okay and we close this by curly braces right all right so as you can see uh, we've got this and now if we type uh, d in square brackets uh, tuli and hit enter and yeah hit end okay sorry sorry uh, I did a typo so t square bracket t u l i t was small that was a typo and if i hit enter why well i have actually uh, not given the codes uh, so and i hit enter now now you would get the value as 40 Right. So this, that's an example of a key and value pair. Okay. Now let's take the last example that is boolean. Yeah. So boolean takes only true or false. Right. And please note uh, T and in true and F is in false are in caps. Okay. So they are associated with logical operators as we have seen in the earlier sessions. Right. So let's take some examples. Yeah. Um, so let's see A equals true b equals 
balls I hit enter now I, I can't actually define uh, C equals true right yeah because T should be in caps and same F should be in uh, caps right right okay so um, now if we type uh, get I mean if you try to find the type of this uh, variable so it is going to a and enter you're going to get bool right that is boolean right it's a uh, class boolean right uh, let's check for uh, b all right i'm having some tough time with my keyboard b enter so it's again class boolean so as you can see we have uh, we can assign a boolean value to a variable okay now let's check the integer value for a and b yeah that is that is the fun thing okay so for this um, int so one and int zero so please note i mean you, you can get the integer value uh, which is actually the value of true and false so all this is going to help in our future sessions right yeah so okay uh, I think we have covered quite a few important topics in Python today yeah we started off with the uh, integers with floats with complex numbers strings and we, we understood that uh, we don't need to define a variable before assigning the value to a, a variables so that is the beauty of Python and then we uh, checked out on the few other things such as a list range set tuples dictionaries and lastly boolean okay so that's all for now guys uh, in the next section we are going to cover another important uh, aspect in the python that is if else and we are, with that we are going to start with a looping sort of um, uh, i mean loops uh, which are used in python language so so stay tuned guys uh, by subscribing to the subscribe icon and uh, you get notified by clicking on the bell icon okay okay until next time keep watching and keep learning thank you